Well, we talked about the rat race, which is the championship right now. Just have a look at this. The trap door. They are all clawing their way away from it desperately. It is so tight down there, but I think we probably accept Huddersfield have gone, and with all due respect to Fulham, joining them in all likelihood. Who do you fear for and why? I'd... I honestly fear, I know Cardiff are sitting in the position at the moment, but I fear for Burnley. Why? Um, having looked at their fixtures, they only play Cardiff um, that they can affect down there, which obviously could end up being a win that could see them safe. But I looked at their last four fixtures, they play Man City, Everton, Arsenal and Chelsea. So if they're not out of it come the last four games, um, it could be a really difficult end run for Burnley and, and they might rely on others slipping up rather than them. Obviously, don't get me wrong, they beat, they beat Spurs earlier on in the, in the season um, and, and they know they're capable of it. Um, but it'll be a tough run in when you're looking and, and, and teams are picking up wins around you. Is it hard to look at fixtures at this stage of the season? Because you think, oh, you know, there's no such thing as an easy game anyway in the Premier League, but teams at the bottom are scrapping. Teams up above, potentially, you know, they're much higher in the table, but could still be involved in Europe. Could have the mind elsewhere. And pushing for the Champions yeah. League. You know, you or, Arsenal, Chelsea, then. Yeah. Or FA the Cup. Season. It is, and it's, it's difficult to pick because I, I don't know about you, I change my mind every week. You know, a, a couple <laughs> of weeks ago. I change every day. <clears throat> yeah, a couple of weeks ago we sat here and we sort of agreed that it was going to be Cardiff. Then they're going to get a fantastic result yeah. against West Ham at the weekend. Burnley looked as if they were on the way to being safe and now that they've been dragged right back into it. Southampton get a brilliant result at the weekend against Tottenham, but only a couple of points off of it, you know, so... Well, it, it, just... to il illustrate your point, uh, Paul, even more, Brighton get a fantastic win at Crystal Palace on Saturday. That's the early game, Saturday lunchtime. Yeah. Come the end of the weekend, it's sort of satisfactory. Yeah. And, they, and, and much needed. And that could have been a brilliant win. I mean, you, you look at the bottom four here now, and you look at what they've got in front of them. Their fixtures are... I don't think you can look at any of those, the current bottom four and say, well, that's easier or harder than the other. Because there's, there's question marks everywhere, isn't there? There is. And look, if you, they've all got Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal, the majority of them, Man United, all to play. And, you know, going back to your point about Brighton, Brighton would have been absolutely buzzing with that result. Yeah. Waiting on the results coming in in the afternoon and then seeing Southampton one in and seeing Cardiff one in, sort of... It's, it's a bit of a... It's a kick in the teeth. Yeah, it is. A massive kick in the teeth for them. But it was a great result and... Um, you know, I know Brighton will hope, hope Man City are, because um, that's the last game of the season, you know, um, down at Brighton um, for them. So they won't want Man City going there either. But as you said, looking at all of these, all, all everybody's running, you know, I think you're right, Fulham and Huddersfield are more or less gone. But saying Burnley's is difficult, Cardiff's is difficult as well. You know? I think looking at Cardiff's though, I think if they're going to stay up, they can control their own destiny. They play Burnley, they play Brighton, they play Fulham, they play Palace. Mm. So as much as they could lose it with those games. But, you know, Cardiff, the way that Neil Warnock does things, the way you'll grind teams down and, and be horrible to, to get the best and, and get the result. Um, I don't know if many of the other teams have got that towards the back end of the season to, to be that horrible team that just put on a performance to get, simply get a result and get out of there. The only thing I think sorry, that Burnley have got in their favour is, uh, you know, Sean and his staff and, and the players mm -hmm. know how to stay up. Mm. You know, and they've, they've done unbelievably well um, to stay up as, as long as they have done. You know, and having that experience in the changing room when you've got seven, eight games to go can be huge. The other thing with Cardiff as well is that Neil Warnock has said all season, we expect to be in the bottom three, and it's almost there's no pressure on them. He's never, ever, you've never heard him come out and really have a go. I think, maybe, I think there was one game when he had a real go and he wasn't happy. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's kept a kind of a, a buoyancy about the place despite everything, and I mean everything, that has happened. And it's as though he's not afraid of taking blows as long as they're there or thereabouts. Yeah, and I think he, he's very clever because some of the comments he'll come out with after a game will be to direct attention towards him, taking the pressure off of his team, and it, it's good management. And um, like I say, the fact that a lot of people in, in the media have, have said that, you know, for everything that Pep Guardiola has done at the top of the league and, and if he's to go on and win this, win that and win the league, it's fantastic, of course. We want to see the top end of the, of the league being praised. But people have said if, if Neil Warnock manages to keep this Cardiff side up, he, he, he'll be up there as one of the, the favourites for, for manager of the year just because of the job he's done. And, and it's just, the, like I say, the, the character that he is and, and 
the way he gets the best out of his players. He just seems like a, a, a person that you'd, you'd really want to play for. It was amazing he got them up in the first place. You know, I don't think even when you go back to the start of last season, nobody would have expected Cardiff mm -hmm. to be up there with Neil, and he's, he's done a great job. Um, and he knows how to man manage his players properly. You know, and he knows the ones to give a kick up the backside. I was, had a short spell with Neil at Crystal Palace and um, when I was on loan there, and it was an eye opener for a couple of months. <laughs> let's put it that way, in a, in a good way. Um, you know, the ones that he needs to put the arm around, he'll do that in the right way. The ones that he really needs to get into, he'll make sure he'll do that. The, the complete ends of the scales, and, and that man management could see them staying up. Well, let's have a look at the uh, four above them as well, because again, <laughs> you couldn't say that any of these are walking the park by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you'd say, I think Newcastle have, have picked up just at the right time. Um, if they're able to, to, to nick a couple of results along the way, I, th I think getting to 40 points might, might be enough. Um, but yeah, Palace, Brighton, Southampton. Southampton seem to, we seem to look at them when Hassan and Hooten come in and, and got a result, and then you're thinking, oh, they'll be all right now. And all of a sudden, they have a few bad games and they're back in it. And, you just, like I say, you look at their games on paper, you know, they've, they've got that, Liverpool, which is a game that we'd say is a, is a given for Liverpool. But other than that, you'd say that Southampton could, could pretty much take part in every single one of those games. Well, that's a massive game already, the Brighton game for mm -hmm. Southampton, you know, the next Premier League game for, for many reasons. Brighton uh, is a tough run as well, isn't it? Though? Yeah, and that's there. I mean, the last six seasons, it's been 36 points has kept you up. What do we think it will be this time around? As high as that? I mean, the moment we've got Cardiff with 28 points, eight games left. I'd, I'd probably fancy Cardiff to get more points than that. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, they're a team that can, even if it's a, 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 a team that's in the top half, in the top six, they can rustle their feathers and they can, they can do things that other teams can't do. If you've got Southampton playing against a, one of the top sides in the division, Southampton will do what they do and play nice football where you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe playing football. Whereas when Neil, uh, Neil Warnock's got his team long throws from anywhere over the halfway line, get it into your box, being really strong, really aggressive and trying to upset the game, upset the tempo of the game, it, you'll find one, one or two teams that, that will fold under that kind of pressure and, and it will get them result just from that. I think points-wise it'll be a lot higher this year than what it, what it has been mm. in, in previous years. You know, as you said, you can see Cardiff getting a couple of wins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say nearly 40, 40 points used to always be the benchmark, didn't it? You, yeah. say, yep. you get to 40 points, you're safe. And then the last couple of years, it's sort of dropped down a little bit more. But I think 40 points is, is going to be nearer that, 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 that total for teams to stay up this year. I think year. the thing that's in all of their favour is that there's so many of them. <laughs> there's so many of them that are down there, similar to what we were talking about with the championship push. There's that many in and amongst it that if you have a bad result, you still need four others to have done really well that weekend, it's all at the same time, to, to, to leapfrog you kind of thing. And it's that consistency with it, you know, talking about Southampton getting a great result, then dropping off. Newcastle, you know, I'm still surprised to see Newcastle in there, because they, they seemed that under Rafa they were getting some unbelievable results. And they, they could easily get sucked and in. And then you look at the league table and they're still down there. 